and we are live what is going on everyone it's your boy johnny dunn and we are back with another one today another epic vv live stream today we just have one drop but it is a big drop today an expensive one too we have patrick hughes the reverse perspective drop i'm absolutely in love with this artwork shout out to everyone join the live stream today we got tucson tucson collectibles the first one in the building today it says this drop today is expensive this is an expensive drop i think this is an amazing piece of artwork today so I'm excited to dive into the details. And I have a couple great videos today. One is from Vivian3, once again, crushing it with the content. Keep it up, guys. Doing amazing work, Corey and Heather. And also, I have a couple other videos I want to go over. Just some older Patrick Hughes videos to kind of give you guys maybe a different perspective or maybe a little bit more insight into who he is as an artist. I fell in love with this guy. This guy, you know, he's been around for a while now, making amazing art. And I think the world needs to see it. He is a legendary artist, but I don't think everybody in the world knows him just yet. I think as time goes on, his art will live on forever because it's very unique. And I'm, I'm absolutely in love. Now, I do want to say with this drop, I'm not sure what it's going to do in the marketplace. You know, we do have big drops coming up in the future. So maybe if we don't get it today on the drop, my game, I'm going to go over my game plan in a little bit when I go over these, uh, these details here. I'm going to share my screen just a moment here. And also, I have the VV web app up and ready. Let's go. We're going to be diving into what the web app looks like today. I know I'm excited for it. I'll give you guys my insight on what I think about it so far and where I think it can go. Today, we have the Reperspective, Patrick Hughes, amazing artist. Actually, this is the exact video that we're about to watch. So that's perfect for Unmashable. Yep. Wow, crazy. This is the one that I think I'm going to be going for, guys. A lot of people now again this is not a blind box drop so we will have the option to go for whichever one you want i've been torn all night thinking about <laughs> which one i should go for i'm still kind of torn so it may come down to a game time decision but i'm leaning this one and i just love the way this one looks i love both of them so it's kind of hard to decide <laughs> i just think this one may come out i think this one may be a tad bit easier to get and i just love how big it is this is probably one of the biggest posters we're going to see on the VV app, at least we have seen so far. I have posted a video of this on my Instagram, VV NFT collection, and it gave a video of what it looks like when you move around. And I'm in, I'm obsessed with it. Absolutely love it. But it's tough, you know. It's gonna be, I think, tough to get. 1,590 editions, so pretty limited. $200 price point, kind of expensive for what people think. But I think out of all the artwork so far, this one definitely deserves a higher price. I think this is one of the fine art pieces that we've seen on vv this is the other ultra rare hair this is the venice piece this is done in 2021 now both of them have a physical counter piece which is pretty cool this is done in 2018 so this one's a little bit older i think that's what makes me want to kind of get that one too it's a little bit i think more people may be a little bit more familiar with it but again i think both people are gonna or you know both artworks are gonna do amazing I think people are going to love both of them. This one looks pretty high class piece as well, too. Originally, I wanted this piece. This is the one that I was going to go for originally. I absolutely love both. I think the other piece may be a little bit more fun for people to walk around and look at all the different images. But this piece reminds me of more of a little bit more higher class height. So I don't know. They both look amazing. This Again, 1,590 editions, both the same amount. The first edition pieces. Absolutely in love with these. Let me know in the chat. Which one are you guys going for? We got Doctor Strange in the building. Let's get it. I think we will have to go bust out Rhythm Gate once again for this drop. I do think it's going to be very tough. So shout out to anyone who got the last drop. The last super limited comic book drop. We got December Bitcoin in the building. <laughs> I'm just here to watch you guys score. <laughs> Hopefully, December, we need that good luck from you. Are you going to go for this one or are you not going to go for this one? Because... And there's a lot of debate right now. This one could go under retail. Could it not? I'm kind of torn on this one. You know, if it does go under retail, I think that's only because we have Star Wars popping up soon, maybe. A lot of bigger drops. Um, if it does go under the retail, I probably will complete the set of this one. Absolutely. I definitely want these in my showroom. Now, if it doesn't go under retail and it's a little bit more expensive after the drop, I was talking about it last night with a few people. I think my game plan is just to hold off on them then. And maybe once we do get a huge drop coming out, maybe then 
I'll come back and double back and get grab one of these. Henry, what's up, Johnny? It was a hard no at first, but really debating going for it now. <laughs> I mean, some of these videos might make you change your mind, too, if you were going to pass up on them. I think the videos are a good little pump-up video as well, too. The FOMO is real. Now, again, Henry, I want to make sure you know I, I do state this because we don't know that what the price points are going to be in the secondary market. We know the market sentiment's kind of low right now. But I think things did just pick up a little bit because we did just get the VV web app finally for a lot of users. Or I should say for a group of users, and it's going to be, you know, widespread. Eventually, everybody will be able to use it. I'm watching you on my new smart TV. Let's go. Shout out to Punch with his new smart TV. Hopefully, one day, we're going to be able to get a little VV app on that smart TV. And then maybe you can put some of your collectibles or artwork on that TV and kind of show it off that way. Tomorrow is May. I think we have one more. What is it? April 30th today? Yeah, April 30th. Yep. Tomorrow is May 1st. Who knows what's going to happen, right? But I think my game plan is to go for one of these on the drop. If I grab it, amazing. You know, I'll see what the, they come out when the secondary market, the other one does. Again, if it's a little bit more expensive, then I'm probably just going to hold off. Just I'll be happy with just getting one today. That's kind of how I feel like it's going to go. Just grab one on the drop, and then I'll wait till maybe a Star Wars or whatever the big announcements are in May. That's when I think maybe these kind of, you know, get hurt a little bit. And then maybe I'll finish the set. Or maybe if I miss the drop today, which I don't even want to say, knock on wood, let's all hope we get the drop. <laughs> if I miss the drop, though, I may just hold off completely until we get a bigger drop, bring the prices down. I don't have too many gems right now. You're going to see my gem count and everything when I bring up this uh, VV web app. <laughs> so, but the good thing about this VV web app right now, before Omi to NFT, we're going to be able to enter gems in without getting hit with the Apple fee. That's going to be huge. I was just saying a couple of days ago, maybe even yesterday on the live stream, guys. I didn't know the web app was going to come out this early. I was saying how once we get the web app, it's going to allow more liquidity to flow in. Even before Omen to NFT, because imagine if you had 10K or you know 30K or whatever the case is that you want to put in the VV app to start collecting some of these collectibles, right? Or comic books. It'd be hard to put in 30K right now, entering 600 gems at a time, getting hit with the Apple fee every time. I believe this web app will allow people to enter gems in without hit it, getting hit with those Apple fees. So I think this is a huge first step for what's about to come in the future. Did you pre-order any HR road packs, Big JD? This VV drop is a grail. Hope I can land. Shout out to the palace. So I haven't um, pre-ordered any uh, HR road packs, the palace. Um, I have been looking at some of their, uh, some of their other things though. But shout out to you for grabbing those packs. I think they could do well. You know, anytime you have a licensed collectible, a digital collectible, a digital car, trading card, comic book, whatever the case is, I think they have a chance to do really good. Shout out to the Palace and all the content creators in the Palace gang. Hopefully you pull some great ones. I'm not sure who's speaking right now. Is it Jerry? Is it BZ? Is it, you know, Zachary Roy? I don't know who it is, but shout out to the Palace gang. Hopefully you guys pull some great cards over there. Your local scalper going for Brave Gate with this one. That's actually a good plan right there. You know, Brave Gate, shout out to the local scalper and everyone else going for Brave Gate. Now, if you guys aren't sure what Brave Gate is, I, I think Brave Gate's a good way to go for drops if you are pretty confident with rebounds and you're not that confident going for a drop that's really, really limited. I definitely think the Brave Gate strategy is good for these either one collectible drops or maybe two collectible drops that are extremely limited. Like anything under 2K, I would say, is a pretty solid idea to go for it because basically what Brave Gate is, if you guys aren't familiar and first time hearing about it, um, I think this is the vault who came up with it. <laughs> so many gates out there. It's hilarious. I love it. Um, I think it works out, you know, pretty good amount of time. Those people who are confident in those rebounds, you basically miss the drop on purpose. You don't go for the drop. You're having like a brave decision. That's the quote unquote theory behind it. You're having a brave decision, missing the drop, only going for the rebound. Now, the thought process behind this is when you miss the drop, your buy now will most likely be, you know, still enabled to click for those rebounds. A lot of times on these one collectible or two collectible, very limited drops, if you go to hit buy now and you're too late or maybe even too early and you miss that drop, a lot of times your buy now is now not clickable, right? You can't click the buy now. Um, and so... Most people are going to go for the drop and most people won't be able to go for the rebound. So because of that, 
the people solely going for the rebounds may increase their chances a little bit if they're confident with the rebound strategy. So I think that's a pretty solid idea right there, local scalper. I'm not sure who created the Brave Gate, but I think it was the vote. If it was, you know, shout to you. If it was someone else, my bad. Shout to everyone else who live streams all the drops. You know, that's what's so great about Vivi is all the content creators. You know, we're one big family, right? Obviously, you know, people have some arguments here and there, but, you know, overall, we love each other, right? As content creators, we all respect each other. And there's so many of us now to where it makes it amazing to where all the people in the community now can kind of, you know, go for this guy for this little niche and go for this content creator for this niche and just creates one big family that way. So it's been amazing to see everything kind of, you know, unravel the way it has. Just say hello, my iPad, but going back to the TV mode. <laughs> Let's go. Shout out to the punch. I think you got to save that iPad for the drop. iPad definitely does pretty good on the drops I've been hearing. TY, good morning. Good morning. Pay pay. Grail of Art on VV, probably Cat Bronson. Oh, I like I like the Cat Bronson too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely agree. I think this is going to be one of the higher end artworks before we see those one of ones. I think one those one of ones could definitely go for millions of dollars, depending on who the Excuse me, depending on who the artist is. But yeah, I like the Cat Bronson too a lot. The decline artwork. This one to me though just feels like that high end, you know, that fine art. There's all different types of art, right? Um, that's just the way I get the feeling of this one. Web app, you guys, you guys will see in just a second. I'm gonna be pulling up. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple of videos first, and then I'm gonna bring up the web app, I think. Let's go. The palace is loving the Patrick Hughes. I do too. Not a bad idea at all. T.Y. will be spending $200 on Omi today. Waiting for Star Wars week. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough battle, right? We don't know, you know, maybe some of us have a better, you know, feeling than others about what could be better long term. But in the micro, I mean, it's always that debate, right? Omi, Vivi. I feel like you can't go wrong with both. Absolutely love both. Love Omi. Love Vivi. You know, I, I probably would have put a little bit more money into Omi originally, but I just went so hard on the VV NFTs to where I was a little tapped out to be able to increase my Omi bag to where also I have a lot of, I feel like high end NFTs to where I can eventually sell some of my collectibles for a couple mil Omi to where I felt like I got that, that foundation of at least one mil Omi. And then that's kind of my game plan as we move into Omi to NFT. I'm going to probably increase my Omi bag to at least, you know, I'm going to at least get to like three to five mil. That's like my, I want to at least get to um, for Omi. So that's what, kind of my game plan. I want to sell a couple of my collectibles, so maybe some comic books for more Omi in the future. Patrick Hughes is a G. <laughs> birthday in 10 days. Wow. Shout out to Punch. Happy early birthday. Not a bad idea, LJ. You know, that's a big, big uh, debate right now. Is it going to drop below retail? Because we do have, you know, a lower sediment market right now. If this was back in January, I think this would easily go for a few, probably like at least 500 right away. But we're going to see what happens. You know, there's only, what, less than 3,000 total editions. So it's going to even be hard to get this drop. I'm going to be going over my rhythm gate strategy. Hopefully, you know, it helps out some people today. Let's go. Going for Venice. Shout out to season three OG. I'm torn season three. I don't know which one I want. I, I want them both. I wish we could kind of go for both at the same time. But I, I'm I'm leaning to create expectations right now. May 7th is BZ's B day. Wow. Okay. May's going to be a big month then. May 4th, <laughs> Star Wars Day. We got May 7th, BZ's B day. Shout out to Brendan Z from the palace. I think that's what it, you said, right, T.Y., or did you say something else? Oh, you'll be spending $200 of Omi today. <laughs> I read that wrong. I read that as you'll be spending $200 to buy Omi. <laughs> that's hilarious. I think that's a smart move, too. Sub 100. Loving the username. Loving the sub 100s, huh? I'm a big fan of the sub 100s, too. I don't have too many of them, though. Good morning, Vivi fam. Good luck in the drop today if you decided to go for it. Which one of you stacking green ghost bear? <laughs> I think that's BZ. Every time I think of those ghost bears, I think of BZ. That's hilarious.
good way to look at it, Tucson. I think a lot of people go for the drop who do not actually want it, nor have the gems loaded. Yeah, local scalper, I think a lot of people will be going for this drop just to kind of flip to get more gems for Star Wars. You know, I'm going to take a hit, and I'm going to add in more gems for when Star Wars comes. I think this is a huge opportunity in life. I mean, when you have the first ever Star Wars coming out digitally, I think that's going to be an absolute game changer. So if they drop a comic book, I'm going to try to grab that. If they drop, you know, Darth Vader, I'm going to try to get that. Luke Skywalker. Who knows, right? People are talking about we could have a whole Star Wars month. I don't know, but it feels like to me, I'm happy that they're dropping it when the market sediment's kind of low. Kind of like how they dropped amazing collectibles back in the day when, you know, we had uh, the first ever Marvel NFT, Spider-Man, came out. You know, came out of the marketplace. Secret Rare was about like $1,200. <laughs> Obviously, everybody saw what happened to that one. That went up to like 80 grand. I think it's back then like 40-ish right now, maybe 35. But yeah, I think anytime you have historic moments, like it could definitely be a life-changing opportunity. Which one's everyone aiming for? I think most people are going to be going for Venice if I had to kind of guess. Just kind of my my theory of, of kind of soaking in being like a sponge around the community. I feel like most people want the Venice. I even wanted the Venice one at first too. Rhythm gate on the wife's iPhone 13 brave gate on my SR 21 Samsung. Hope to get one. Wow. Not a bad idea right there. Pepe. I like it and like it a lot. Got two phones, two chances here. Shout out to your wife. Oh, not a bad idea. Season three OG. No, I think the ultra rare comics will do good, especially the VV exclusives over time. And we get closer to that moment. We can put them in our showrooms. But I think Disney going to moments are almost one of the safest bets, in my opinion. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor. But I think long term, a lot of people are going to want at least to have one Disney going to moment. I think that's how it's going to be. I remember saying that first week that got dropped of Disney going to moments, I was saying, I think we're going to look back at this time and anybody who just gets one of these golden moments is going to be like, wow, you know, I have one Disney golden moment. So I think it's going to be the same thing moving forward. I think as we continue to get them, people are going to try to just get their very favorite one. Maybe it's Winnie the Pooh, right? Maybe it's, you know, whatever, whatever the case is, whatever they resonate with, they're, they're interested in. Um, so for me, I think those Disney Golden Moments are a safe bet. Now, there is a lot of them compared to some of the other edition counts, but it's Disney. I think that's why they made a lot of them, quote unquote, a lot of them. Hey, Dr. Strange, the, the biggest thing about it is just getting out there, getting started. You know how many times people go a whole year without saying we're without even starting? They just try to think of ideas of what their niche could be. Just go and make content that you like. And you're going to fumble into, or not fumble, but you're going to stumble into the, your niche. You're going to find the niche that you really, really like, that people are interested in. And probably a lot of people don't even realize that you're making content just yet even. So if you guys aren't following Dr. Strange on YouTube, you know another great VV content creator out there, definitely subscribe to his channel. Shout out to my guy. Not happy with my vault evaluation today. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to see mine. Um <laughs> it's down definitely a pretty big amount um, but again it's still up a lot from where i started so and i'll uh, probably same with youtube punch so it's always kind of that got to have that perspective with it that reverse perspective <laughs> what a bdk i will be going for this drop yep now i know this drop could maybe not do the best with everything else coming up but again i think this is going to be a big one in the future We got 40 minutes to the drop. Man, I'm torn. I don't know which one I'm going to want in my showroom. I'm going to have to watch the video again on my Instagram. If you guys haven't seen it, this is what the uh, re-respective looks like. The crate expectations. The video.
my hometown buddy just texted me. I think it looks amazing. I couldn't find one of the um, the Venice videos. Or I couldn't play it, but they both look amazing. So, again, if it goes on to retail, I mean, I'll personally kind of be selfishly happy so I can collect them both at a cheap price. <laughs> but, you know, if they come out expensive, then I'll be happy I got one. And if I don't get one, well, let's not even say that. Knock on wood. We're all getting one today. <laughs> I did chasing Sundays. Yep. So we're going to be going over that in just a second. Kind of just rambling on real quick. <laughs> Getting into some of these comments. Um, I, I was happy I got it. Shout out to the Call Me VV team. I'm excited for it. I tried testing out some of my showrooms just to see what it looks like on the VV app. And I couldn't still, I still couldn't load it. So I think that's probably some of the bugs that still have to be worked out. But I'm telling you, once we can, you know, get into these showrooms and start working on them, you guys are going to see Johnny late night live streaming tutorials how to build these showrooms and everything i'm sure the vaultaholics are going to go crazy you know it's gonna be a lot of great content for people omi is pretty low good time to buy do your own research <laughs> that's a fact pay pay that's a fact that's one way to look at a punch not any recent news sub 100 on any kind of mcp implementations on the vv just yet but that's going to be coming around the corner this web app is a first step, I think, for a lot of big things in the future. MCP should be coming out. Art World Virtue, <laughs> Vultures circling around Hughes already. Good morning, JD. You going for the drop? I am C Rios. I am going for this drop. I think um, for me, I'm absolutely obsessed with this artwork. I think it's going to look amazing in my showroom. When I think of having a digital museum, I think of having one of these fine art pieces in my showroom. I would like to have them both, but if I can at least have one, I'll be super happy with that. Hughes Wild Live, 35% of the living artists you have heard of. Interesting, interesting Tucson. I think he's got, his art's going to live on forever too. Question of the day. Do you pay retail or gamble that it might drop below retail on secondary? This is the question of the day, BDK. Absolutely. And for me, you know, I don't really like to gamble too much. I think for me, I love this artwork. So I'm okay if I pay $200, get the drop. It's going to be hard to get the drop. So I'll be happy just to grab the drop. If it goes under retail, I'd be surprised kind of. But at the same time, I really wouldn't be that surprised because we know the overall sentiment in the market right now. $200 is a lot for some people. And so with the Star Wars coming out soon, that we're all expecting or speculating. <laughs> I've been saying it like it's confirmed. I'm, I'm not saying it's confirmed, but we're all speculating it's coming out soon. So it could get hurt. But again, I'm not really grabbing this piece to flip it in the short term. So if it comes out under retail, I'll just complete the other. I'll, I'll grab the other one under retail and complete the set. Um. I would love to get a future airdrop of some future artwork of, you know, Patrick Hughes. That'd be amazing. I'm not completing the set for that reason, but absolutely. See, Rose, I absolutely could. Um, I'm not saying it can't. I'm saying there's the possibility for both. Um, I think this artwork looks so amazing to where when people get it, they probably won't want to flip it as much as some of the artworks in the past. But I think this month is going to be so big to where people will flip it for more gems. So, we could see it go down. Agree on Golden Moments. Also, Grail Comics will be top form performers. I agree with Chasing Sundays. You know, when you look at, like, maybe the top 10, top 15, maybe just top 10 Holy Grail Comics right now on VV, even when they release, you know, future Holy Grail Comics, I think those top, top comics, especially, like, the top five, they're always going to be Holy Grail Comics, like Fantastic Four number one, Marvel Comics number one, even Amazing Spider-Man number one, even when, you know... Spider-Man's FA comes out. Amazing Spider-Man number one is still going to be a holy grail. So, Shout out to Taps if he's live right now too. Going to show Taps some love. I'll be back. Appreciate you chasing Sundays. Shout out to Taps as well. Give him a shout out, a little good luck. Hopefully he grabs a drop. I saw he got a Seeker Rare on the, what was it? I have Agamotto, I think it just was. So shout out to Taps for grabbing that Seeker Rare. My gut says to go for it too, Diego. My head said, you know, it could go into retail and all that, but I'm not too worried about that. <coughs> what 
Why do you think it won't sit? It will not sell out until at least 30 minutes. <laughs> Tommy, I wish. I think it's going to sell out immediately. Um, but again, like Puncher said, if you're flipping it, don't go for the drop. But if you're collecting it and you want that piece, then I would go for the drop. The reason why I think this is going to sell out immediately is kind of like we touched on early on in this uh, in this live stream. There's only 1,590 editions of this. <laughs> and you see how many users VV has? Now, not every user is a hardcore collector. Some people think there's only about 10,000 hardcore VV collectors. So even in that case, say there was only 10,000 real collectors on the app, right? I mean, there's only 3,000 editions of this. And he's a high-end artist. So with all that being said, let's dive into um, let's dive into one of the videos here. Now, this is for a Mashable. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Vivian 3. This one's for a Mashable. It's only a four-minute long video, and then we're going to dive into Vivian 3's video on this one. I'm Patrick Hughes, and I'm an artist. I've been an artist for a long while, and I've always been interested in humor. There's a certain moment I made a uh, first sticky out room about uh, 50 years ago, and uh, since then, I've made a speciality of making things in perspective sticking out that cause them to move but in reverse, and I call it reverse spectrum. In reverse. I love it. I think there is a sense of humor underlying everything I do, and it's uh, perhaps a way of what we call pulling your leg or ideally making you think about there it is. what it is that we see, how we see, and how we can be misled by what we think about what we can see. And that's the beauty of being an artist, is you leave something behind you that is much nicer than my knees, my art. You know, it's a great way of uh, defeating death, really. I love being, uh, as it were, in my tiny way, immortal. That's the thing, you know, his artwork, you know, basically Patrick Hughes' name will be immortal. You know, he's going to live on forever because of his artwork. It's so unique, and it looks amazing. People are going to remember Patrick Hughes forever. And that's the kind of way I see, you know, Alfred Kahn's legacy going, too. All of these famous brands that Al Kahn has worked on and been part of his whole entire life, I think his name's going to live on forever. He's going to be immortal. He's going to make these brands live on forever through the blockchain, digitally. You know, putting all the brands that he worked on, Ninja Turtles, Pokemon, etc., just making that digital, and now it's going to live on forever. What happens roughly is I think of what to do, and then uh, we get the shape made to make it, all these uh, big white shapes you see behind me, and then we design, say, Venice to go on it, and then it goes upstairs and those uh, up to 10 people paint it. We certainly do a painting a week. You know, we do about 50 or more paintings a year, oil paintings. I've sold uh, 4,000 prints, roughly, and uh, maybe 2,000 paintings and collages, some vast numbers. Like Every time you walk away from the picture, you think, oh, this thing is uh, just a bit of wood, painted wood sticking out. But then when you come and you relate to it, it comes alive. Uh, that's the exciting thing, is to make something that comes alive. And, and life, you know, has always been like trying to put your finger on a bit of mercury. Once you put your finger on it, it squirts away from it. I'm in that uh, Alice in Wonderland world of uh, through the looking glass. Upside down or inside out or the wrong way round or disappearing up into itself, you know, creating from itself. I think the commonsensical view and the proper way and the normal way are all unspeakable conventions. Love that one. 30 minute warning. It's exciting to, to me to have made something that is so, uh, interesting and difficult to describe yes it should 
be, should, when you invent something, it should be in a way difficult to describe. It, it, would, be a, it would be sad if it could be described in moments, wouldn't it? Good point. I have two reactions when I see people viewing my work. One is um, a professional kind of reaction, and I see which pictures do they look at carefully, which ones do they pass by, which ones do they get very involved with, which ones are they not interested in. It's a whole reason to do it, to see the relation between people and the pictures. And it's so exciting to see people uh, taking it all in. Big fan of this guy. Great video. Great video. Big fan of this guy. Hughes has collab stuff with Banksy on. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that he touched on, I don't think he touched on it in that exact video. It was another video I was watching. He says that sometimes he collabs with different artists, meaning like he'll have art from different artists in his work. So absolutely, you know, he does have collabs with Banksy. Yeah, Tucson. I think the out of control, the, the losing control. I think that was about five K editions. Yep. Yeah, I agree, Diego. Yeah, it's fifteen hundred editions for each piece. Yeah, Banksy calls all that stuff is going to be amazing to see one day on VV. I think that's when we'll start to see a lot of like one of ones and. I could definitely see those going for, you know, a couple million for some of them. I think that's when we start to get the headline news and a lot of people dive into, you know, VV through just the artist alley even. I mean, once we get this web app up for everybody, that's when we're going to start to see the artist alley roll out. I mean, that's how a lot of it is for a lot of these artists, Tucson. I think VV is going to introduce a lot of people to the new artists around the world. Sometimes we're going to find an artist that maybe a lot of us have heard of. Sometimes... It's going to be the exact opposite. We got Willow Kid. How we doing? How we doing, fam? Yeah, not a bad idea, Willow. I'm going to be adding in more gems for when we do get Star Wars and everything like that. I don't have too many gems. I only have like just under 300 myself too. So I have just enough to go for one of these. We got Jess85. How we doing, fam? How is everything, Jess? Are you a fan of this art? Are you going to be going for this drop, Jess? Or are you passing on this one? I'm big fan of this one, so I will be going for this one. Yeah, autograph.io. There's a lot of one-on-one stuff everywhere. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to dive into this video now from Patrick Hughes. I'm sorry, from VVN3. Welcome back to VVN3 with me, Corey, a.k.a. Old Rhubarb on VV and... Heather from the VVT and also Heroes and Heroines. And we are super stoked with the upcoming artist drop with Patrick Hughes making an entry. This for us is probably the highest tier artist. And that's nothing against the previous artists that we've had on the platform. But Patrick Hughes has been at what he's doing since the 60s. He has spent a lifetime honing the artwork we're getting to see. And it's really exciting getting him on the platform. But before we gush more about him, let's talk about the drop the date the time and the gems all right so reverse perspective series one is dropping on the app on saturday april 30th at 8 a.m pacific standard time there will be two pieces available each priced at 200 gems and it will not be blind box which means you will have to specifically select which one you would like to buy after and go for that one specifically. Now, before we look at the two pieces that we're going to be getting, let's get a word from the artist because he was cool enough to release a little soundbite for Twitter official Vivi. So let's roll that because looking at this art on the screen in a 2D format doesn't really do it justice. So let's roll the clip. Hello, I'm Patrick Hughes. I've been an artist now for 63 years, I think there's something like that. I've always made art that was uh, the wrong way around, the other way around, inside out, upside down, confusing, paradoxical, uh, oxymoronic. And my best idea, which I've pursued closely, 
is to make things in reverse perspective. And as you move them out, the whole you know, vista and the whole array seems to move in front of you. And that's a marvelous thing for an artist to be able to make work that comes alive. The wrong way around is often the best way around, the most lively, the most interesting, the most beguiling, and the most revealing of the way in which we see things. So as you can see from that video, Hugh focuses primarily on illusionary art, where he's creating 2D art pieces on a 3D art platform. And he's what we would classify as a master at this. Hailing from England, Hugh's transitioned from being an art university professor to artist in 1961. And he's been mastering this reverse perspective effect over the last 60 years. In fact, he wrote the book on it. And not just one, lots of books on it. And you'll see wow. that the books don't just focus on the art, but on the psychology of the art as well. By many in the art world, Hughes is considered a living legend, a visionary, and as many art articles state, one of the greatest artists of our time in his niche. For us, he's an artist who adds humor into his work, and that helps bridge the gap between highbrow fine art and consumer grade art. Depending on the gallery and on the piece of art itself, his works range in price from hundreds of thousands of dollars to hundreds <laughs> of dollars. His <laughs> retrospective style pieces tend to fare the best. And you know the artist is of a higher caliber when they're listed as a top artist at premier auction houses like Sotheby's and Christie's. And from sort of a worldwide acknowledgement appeal status, I've never seen so many Google search returns for a drop on BB, specifically <laughs> an artist drop on BB. The first two or three pages of your Google search, if you type in Patrick Hughes NFT, are full of this drop, and that's kind of unprecedented. So both pieces that are dropping on Vivi also exist in the physical world. And because of that, we were able to find some videos of the illusionary effect that we oh, have cool. yet to see on Vivi. So let's take a look at those. First, we're getting crate expectations, coming in as an ultra rare and many 1,590 editions. This piece was created in 2018, and according to Hughes, the choice of these objects on the crates is because people can identify them more easily, and that allows their brain and eyes to quickly begin the process of registering the optical effect. You can see as the camera pans back and forth, the perspective skews wildly, making the art far more immersive. Next, we have the Contemplating Venice also an ultra rare and also minting 1,590 editions. Again, this will not be a blind box, so you need to decide which of the two you want to bid on. This piece was created in 2021. I love that and one Hughes too. has an entire gallery dedicated to his Venice inspired retrospective pieces. The use of light and shadows on the water and buildings add to the illusionary effect of motion as the viewer pans left and right. And that's a wrap for this info dump with the price point being 200 and us budgeting for a move that's going to be happening here in a week or two. We're kind of priced out of this one, which is a bummer. We sort of wish that there were three levels of the drop. One that minted a whole bunch at a lower price, kind of a medium level like we're seeing with this at 1590 with a slightly lower price point. And then one that's super limited with maybe less than 500 or maybe even less than that, minting at a very, very high price point. That way, collectors of all perspectives would be able to collect one of these to have into treasure and after all isn't that what this drop is all about perspective as always great we'll points post more whenever we know more this is Corey and heather signing off great video great video great points sir great points Yeah, so I'll touch on this real quick, this comment before we dive into the VV web app that I know everybody wants to see. I know I'm excited for it, so I'll dive into that just a second. Cover a couple questions here. So yeah, uh, Sub100 says, why is VV not pushing their marketing? We need new users. They need to promote just like other businesses do. So yeah, absolutely. So Sub100, we will see this happen in the future. You know, Al Khan has talked about in previous long, you know, long ago videos saying that we're going to have Disney promote us. We're going to have all these major brands, Marvel market and promote us and that's just not ready to happen just yet you got to think we can't cash out yet on vv yet right we don't have the web app open for everyone just yet so imagine we did imagine we did just bring in 10 15 million new users today right they wouldn't stay 
And I think that's why the social feed that's not really ironed out just yet, because once they're ready to have people stay on the app, that's when I think they're going to work on that social feed. That's when I think they're going to ramp up the marketing, because then when they bring in these millions of users, people have a reason to stick around and to stay. Right now, it's kind of just growing at an organic rate. And the people that want to be on the ground floor, willing to deal with the ups and downs, you know, not everything being perfectly ironed out, you know, it can stay on the app. But so that's just the way I see it. Sub 100 or sub 1000 now it is. I'm not sure which it is, but either way, um, that's just the way I see it. I think we will ramp up marketing, but we need that VV app to be ready to handle it. We need that web app to be out to everybody. We need KYC. We need being able to cash out. Once we can cash out, that's when I think we'll see people like Logan Paul even promote us like crazy. Probably even Gary V. you know, all these big time celebrities. That's when we'll start to see a lot of people. But right now, that's just my opinion is that like, what's the point of I think they've even said this too. like, what's the point of them bringing in tens of millions of users when you know a lot of these things aren't ironed out yet? Because these people probably won't stay on the app at that point. Yep, absolutely. DG vet. And I do have the web app open. I was one of those people that got in early. So I'm about to show you guys what it looks like. I'm excited. Waiting on web app, MTL KYC first, I assume. Yeah, exactly. Willow kid, you hit the nail on the head. So I'm going to dive into what this web app looks like. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm going to break it down. We got the store tab here. You know, just a little laid out. Looks nice here. Got all these different options. This is just a store tab. I wonder if you can go for the drop. I don't think you can go for the drop um, on the web app. But this is the Patrick Hughes. We got 17 minutes. Countdown here. You can go to my collection. These are all my collectibles here. I can go to all. I can go to all my comics, all my sets here. Wishlist. My estimated value is down a little bit. <laughs> but here's uh here's all my collectibles and everything. Nice little way to get that out. I think the feed is just down still. We will be able to have the feed up here. And again, I think this is when we start to see the algorithms all kind of work out, you know, to where we stop seeing a little bit of the spam and everything like that. We really get it ironed out to be like a true social media. We have the market. The market's going to be pretty sweet and solid to go through on the web app. You got all the different comics you can pick from. I guess when you hit all, it doesn't show up yet. Trending brands. This is interesting. So I guess these are what, this is a new thing, right? We've never had trending brands. So I guess the ones that most people are clicking on. Golden moments have to be up there. Interesting to see. Let's go. We got Toby up there. So you can't really click on them just yet. Got the profile. Followers. Let's go. Shout out to all the followers up there. I just found out that I've been a member since March 2nd. I thought it was March 3rd. Let's go. Not too much in my gems right now. But again, like I said, when we, when we get Star Wars, I'm, I'm adding a lot of gems for Star Wars. But it's pretty sweet. We got Superman here. Let's see if I can... Let's see. When we go, let's say, let's go to. Let's go to. What do I want to go to here? Todd. Three Todds. Let's go to this one. Collection collectible not found. All right. So I guess we can't click on the individual collectibles just yet. Here we have the showroom feed. Probably going to be able to. These are just the thumbnails of all my showrooms here. Cannot wait until we can enter these. I'm going to try to find one that doesn't have a lot of collectibles in it, and then we can try to enter it on the stream. This is one with all the Batman. Let's see if this one works. I've been just getting stuck at this loading screen. See, it looks like it won't be able to load it up just yet. 
But yeah, that's a web app. I think you know big things are coming soon. Not too much going on just yet, obviously, but we will get there. It's pretty cool to see that actually unfold. Had a little error adding gems in on the website. I couldn't do it, but I think a lot of people have been able to do it. So I guess it's a little bug I had, but I think that's going to be game changing. Yeah, it shows your OMI balance there and everything. Oh, that's right. The market's down. I forgot. You're right. You're right, DG Vet. That's why I couldn't bring them up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and see, that's the thing, Mark D. There's a lot of people out there that are sitting on hundreds of thousands of gems. And, you know, the whales out there are just seeing how low things can go, right? Before they, because they don't want to scoop in and, you know, buy all these collectibles and then have people just lower the price on them even more. So the whales want to find out what that bottom is. And I think we are extremely close to that bottom if we're not already there. But we'll see. You know, they drop another huge drop or something like that could change things. We got 13 minutes left to the drop. Graphics aren't optimized for PC. Yeah, I would probably agree with that. Yeah. This is an upfront view of how wealth transfers from the poor to the rich. This is how all facts of life work. Yeah, absolutely. Mark D, you know, the impatient, you know, wealth transfers from the impatient to the patient right <laughs> shows the omi balance yep robin ja shooter how we doing how we doing memory rest in peace bots <laughs> you're a beast jd 84 sets no i don't have 84 did i say 84 i think i have 58 58 sets yep only 58 not too many not too many um 282 collectibles the followers, though, 4342. Let's go. I'm following. <laughs> I'm following 7,000 people. That's hilarious. It's funny that I showed you how many people are following on the web app. I always said, I'm like Tom from MySpace. I was just following everybody. <laughs> Very close to the bottom. I agree. Robin J.A. I don't know. Maybe it might have been a glitch. Maybe it did say 84. I wish it said 84. <laughs> I don't have 84, though. I could have. You know, I sold, I started selling some of my sets at like 60. Um, just because I wanted to increase the value of my, collect my collection. Um, now I'm starting to get back up there with the sets. I'm almost at 60. We got 10 minutes left for the drop. Robin J. A. I'm kind of torn. I really don't know which one I want. I think the Venice piece may be a little bit more high end, classy type. The crate expectations 2018 may be a little bit easier to get. That's a bigger size poster, though. I think both are going to look amazing in the showroom. I'm leaning towards the crate expectations. <laughs> the weather keeps popping up. Wow, really? I didn't know this, Alex. If you click on Secret Rare Spider-Man to view 3D, you'll see a white Spider-Man. <laughs> Looks like Moon Knight Spidey. <laughs> what? I got to check that out. Portfolio. Good luck, good luck. Absolutely. Scream Bleed. <laughs> Crazy name, but hey, chat, how we doing? How we doing, fam? Aggressive username there you got. <laughs> What's the sediment on this drop? Good to get or not? Crypto night? You know, it's it's going to be hard to tell. You know, I'm not too positive what the... I would say the overall sediment overall in the marketplace is still not the highest right now. But, you know, we'll see what happens. We got big drops coming in May, which could hurt this one. But long term, I think this is going to do, you know, just fine. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to definitely gonna have to check it out. I don't think it's letting me bring up any collectibles right now since the market's down. Hopefully in five years, we can all be a meetup in, in Bali sharing stories and how we were lucky to be involved this early stage. Johnny Don 777 convention Bali. <laughs> That'd be amazing, DG Vet. You know, I would love to take a trip to somewhere tropical like that. I think we could see it happen, you know, especially in the future as only as Vivi continues to be a household name. We're definitely going to see stuff like that. <laughs> I'm going for the Venice. Big risk, but Coffee Gate at 1 a.m. is going to work. 
<laughs> Let's go, Robin J. A. You know, I am on my coffee gate today. Shout out to the coffee gators out there. I'm gonna go over rhythm gate once again. Any any in case any new users out there tuning in, in case anybody needs a little refresher. All right, so it's not a blind box. That's the biggest thing to remember about this. You know, we're in the store tab, clicking on the drop. Normally, blind boxes would pop up. You know, we're right here on the drop. I'm glad it's not because it's going to be hard to see if it was. We have that gray background. So you have the option. You're going to go for Venice or are you going to go for the crate? If you go for a crate, click on it. And once you scroll down a little bit, the buy now will be here. Now, the buy now button's up this time. So it's the same principle as if the timer was here and the buy now pops up. Again, it's going to be clickable one second after zero. Even if it says zero minutes, zero seconds, and you try to click, you're still going to get that error. So remember, even though you can see buy now, it's not going to pop up one second after zero. It's going to be clickable one second after zero. So that's really the biggest takeaway from this. I'll go over my strategy real quick. We got some time left, but just to go over it. I'm going to act like there's zero minutes left. I'm just going to act like there's 24 seconds and what I would do. If there was like 23 seconds, again, I'm going to start counting down in my head like five to 10 seconds. And I'm going to start my click once. I'm going to start my click right before one second after zero. Five, four, three. Two, one, zero. Buy now. I missed the buy now button that time. <laughs> but if I clicked it, it probably would have been good. So again, I think of it being like a quarterback in sports and football. If I'm a quarterback and I have a timing route or a timing route with my wide receiver, I'm starting my pass slightly before he's open. Slightly before he even looks at me, I'm throwing the ball because by the time the ball gets there. It's going to be perfect timing. So the same way for this. I'm starting my click slightly before the buy now is clickable. So if the buy now is clickable one second after zero, I'm starting my click slightly before that. So we're going to try it again here. I'm going to act like there's zero minutes in just the 13 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, zero. By now. Wow, that would have been perfect. Maybe a tad, 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 tad late. But that's what I'm going to be going for today. And again, if you guys are going for Brave Gate, not a bad idea for this one. Brave Gate is where you just skip the drop and you only go for the rebound. Good luck, Pioneer. Shout out, Jay Kill. Energy, you got about six minutes left. Don't forget. You got enough time just to heat something up real quick. And the assassin, what's up, fam? Tyler Gear in the building, my guy. How we doing, brother? I'm gonna be going for crate. I love both of them. I'm gonna try to get Venice, you know, if it does go under retail. I'm not positive if these are going under retail or not. I think long long term, these are gonna be just fine. Maybe if we do get a crazy announcement or drop in the next day or two for May, yeah, these may get hit hard. But I think long term, these are going to be fine. I'm going for it because I absolutely love the artwork on this. And I just love trying to get the drop. You guys know that's probably why I'm so addicted to this because that competition. It's not so much that blind box, gambling, adrenaline. It's that competition of I'm trying to beat out, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to get this drop. Now, I always said if this goes under retail, I will probably scoop up the second one just to complete the set and then add in more for Star Wars. But if this one does kind of do better than we think, and this one does go pretty expensive or at least over retail, I probably just have to hold off, you know, wait for Star Wars and then pick one of these up if they do dip. I think I'm going to go for crate though. My theory on that is I love both of them so much to where I think crate may be just a tad bit easier to get. I think most people are going to go for the Venice one. There's slightly more likes on the crate, but slightly more comments on the Venice. I think just to get a pulse of the community overall, more people like the Venice painting a little bit more. The crate one is a lot bigger. So I think both are going to do amazing. I'm glad Vivian 3 could 
post that video of what the Venice one looked like. I think I'm a little bit more of a fan of maybe a little bit more of a fan of the crate, the way it looks, the video when you go back and forth. I'm just trying to vision this in my showroom and what are people are going to like more to look at. And I think it's a toss up. I mean, I think the Venice piece reminds me a little bit more of like a high class. But the crate expectations look like looks like a little bit more fun to look at. I don't know. I'm I'm still game time decision right now. I'm leaning crate. Shout out to my guy Tyler Gear. He may be coming on the show next Tuesday. Let's go. Right in the chat if you want to see my guy Tyler Gear come on the Jemmy Dunn show for one of these drops and talk about his BV experience. Super Samoto, not a bad idea skipping today. I think it will, Alex, but we'll see what happens. Maybe it does go above retail and then they announce Star Wars the day after. And it doesn't anymore, but two hundred dollars, fifteen hundred editions. Anyone who sells on the retail is a fool. I agree. Bring him on. That's a fact. Let's go. Yeah, my guy Tyler Gear, he'll, he'll definitely be coming on. And when we when we do the interview together, we're gonna be doing an in-person interview. So it's gonna be kind of cool to have him on the same, you know, on the same same pod together at the same time. And he got in early too. He got in early March of 2021. So we'll probably see, you know, how he feels his experience has been. Maybe some real life purchases that he was able to make because of Vivi. You know, talk about some great times there. Sean Dude Drill. Good luck, JD. I'm not going for it. Priced out, but think the drop is awesome. Like the Venice piece more personally. Good to know, Sean. Good to know. Appreciate you for just tuning in today. We got a couple minutes left. Surprise my, I guess I turned my one alarm off today. It's not a good day to turn that off. But I'm here. I'm ready for the drop. Appreciate that. Sub 100, sub 1000. Could you imagine what Tails will do with these pieces in the show room? Yeah, shout out to Tails. Um, all the Vaultaholics, you know, everybody in that group. Man, I do love the Venice piece a lot. I think that the fact that that's like that high class piece. Is what I'm liking a lot about that. But the crate is amazing too. The People's Champ. Cheers, J Dub. Drew NFTV. Appreciate you big time. Robin JA. Yes, two minutes. We got two minutes exactly left. Two minute warning. Game time decision. Oh man. Maybe I should listen to what the people should tell me to go for in the chat. What do you guys want me to go for? Venice or crate? I'm torn right now. To me, Venice looks more high class, but Crate looks like a little bit more fun in the showroom to like look at. Man, Crate looks huge too, like a huge poster. I may switch it up. I may go Venice. Taps is going crate. Someone's telling me Venice. <laughs> Taps is going crate. I may have to go crate with Taps. Minute 10 seconds left. Man. I think crate's going to look a little bit more fun in the showroom. And I, and I wanted to fill up the whole entire wall. I kind of have a game plan for this. So 53 seconds left. Shout out to my coffee gators. Less than a minute. I'm recording this one. I'm extremely nervous for this one. I'm, I am going to back out, and I'm going to come back in to the crate. All right, it feels good. Good luck, everybody. 30 seconds. Man, my fingers are sweating big time right now. Again, the key is to slow down yourself if you can. Slow your heart rate down so you're not that nervous. 15 seconds. Oh, man. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, oh, 3, 2, 1, 0. Bye now. I got it. I got it. I clicked too early with like four seconds left by accident. That's how nervous I was. Oh, my God. I got it. God, it felt easy. Let me know if you guys felt like it was this easy. 
kind of has me worried right now. <laughs> Did nobody go for this drop? Oh, man. Three-digit mint. Two-digit mint. Talk gate. Alien gate. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. That felt too easy. 928. Let's go. Three digit. 928. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Did everybody get it? I felt like it was a little bit too easy. It kind of has me nervous now. <laughs> Great for me. Good luck. Good luck. I, I did go for it. Robin J. Let's go. Big dub. Oh, man, Chasing Sundays. Um, Chasing Sundays, you know, you deserved one today. You know, Hopping back and forth between me and Taps. I hit, but I don't know if I want it. <laughs> Willow. <laughs> so it out straight away for Super Simono. Miss Rose took an L. Simone took an L. Jeremy took an L. Derek Bragg got it. Let's go. DG Vet got a dub. Wow, December had perfect timing, but still didn't get it. Interesting. December, I wonder if you're still on that white or that shadow ban list or whatever the case is. Have you been getting them when like everybody's been getting them? W but didn't buy it. <laughs> it did have me kind of worried that I got it so easily. Energy took L777 or 775. Great mint number. Maximus said wasting money. <laughs> 999. Wow. DG Vet. Huge mint right there. That's a great mint. I wonder if Venice was tougher to get. JD Gate for the win. Let's go. We're, we're 900 brothers. Super Rush. <laughs> I'm going to go from like eight seconds in to show you guys what happened here. I was so nervous, my fingers jittery, and I, oh, wow, that just lagged like crazy right there. At four seconds, I accidentally clicked it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look how fast that was. I thought I was going to mess it up because I clicked too early. Oh my God. I'm saying on Twitter, I thought I messed up by clicking too early by accident. I was nervous today. Then came in clutch with alien gate, alien fingers. <laughs> oh, my God. Crate 57, wow. Oh. Shout out to you, Michael. Holy cow. That's amazing right there. That's going to go for a premium amount right there. That's huge. Oh, Ken Penguin. Got two Venice. Wow. I got a three-digit Miss Rose. Let's see the exact mint. Let's see the exact mint here. 928 was my mint number. Not bad, not bad. 
Wow, James, you got one of each. Did you go two phone gate? <laughs> Willow's still deciding. Let me know what you uh, went with. Got Venice, 1090. Both were so easy to get. Solid idea, J-A-M-C. I passed. I'm going to be annoyed if it comes out like 300 plus on secondary. Yeah, I'm not sure, Will. I think this is, you know, a toss-up right here. I think the people that love the art will get it. People that are going for the flip. I don't know. It could, it, you know, because we have such a big month coming up, it could, you know, kind of get hurt. We'll see what happens. Wonder what the floor will be. The only way I see it going to like 150 right away is if the people who went for it literally are just buying the 50, you know, half off gems to really to where they pay, you know, basically a hundred dollars for this drop. And then they sell it at 150 and profit to 50. Like, I think that's what's happening for this to where that's only going to last a little bit longer. I don't think that's going to continue to happen as we roll out more and more features as we get KYC and all these different things. And we get cash out. Um, guys, something crazy went wrong. I got the I got one on rebound 409, but didn't have the gems. Just clicked order and the app didn't let me buy the gems. I guess I owe VV 200 gems. I have one pending. What? <laughs> December one. That's insane. That's amazing. So, does your account say minus 200 gems then? Interesting. Yeah, absolutely, Simone. I, I mean, collectors are going to hold it because they love the artwork, you know? Oh, man, Katsumatsu. With 1,500 mint, they don't care about the mint. What does this mean, energy? Do you mean by like the mint number? Oh wow, 195 mint. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> it's gonna be a tough one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could go under retail right away. It did feel way too easy for a 3,000 mint drop. <laughs> like, So that's what kind of had me worried. <laughs> Crate 9999, nine, nine, nine. DG Vet, huge. Ed Feely's crushing it. A 296. Whoo. Two one two gate. What? JC, so you got a rebound? That's huge. I would say that low mint. In the short term, might be best to try to flip it and then buy back a floor. That's what I would do with the low mint of these. Or hold it until interoperability comes. And then the low mints are going to go <laughs> through the roof, I feel like. Especially when an artist this, you know, this legendary. We already know the artist work, the artistic work is going to be the first interoperable. So can you imagine letting go of a... Like the, the way I see it, the artist collectibles... The low mints and then the special mints, like if you have his birth year or something like that, are going to be absolutely insane value, I think, once that interoperability comes. So if you could wait till then, huge. Or try to play that game in the short term, you know, let it go and then buy back a floor when it dips, you know, pocket the difference. That's that's the way I'm treating my Todd right now. I have three Todds left, right, all in the 1,000 mints. So my highest 1,000 mint I actually have for sale right now. 
at like 4.8. And then my theory again is once that sells, buy back a floor and then pack it a little less than a thousand. Wow. So some people are, <laughs> some people are getting the drop kind of like what Alex just said in December without paying for it. Interesting. 88 sets for energy. Let's go, fam. Shout out to you. Signed by the artist. Can't believe it. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Let's check this out. Are they signed on the back punch? Delivered. Wow. So December and Alex both got one without adding in gems. What? Wow. That's awesome. It is signed by Patrick Hughes. Wow. Right there on the back. That to me looks like a handwritten. You know what that looks like to me? That looks like one of the first VV NFTs that was like actually signed. Whoa. I am so glad I own Crate. Crate looks insane. Let me take a look at Venice. Venice is going to look amazing too. <laughs> what? All right. Yeah, Venice looks amazing too. It really does look like it moves. How insane is that? This art is incredible. Venice looks amazing. Let me show you guys the, the crate. I don't know what this price is going to be. MBZ. I'm thinking a couple mil. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to be. I think it could be kind of high right away and then work its way down. If we get a Star Wars drop or announcement, <laughs> say goodbye <laughs> temporarily in the short term. But then long term, I think this is going to do amazing. Whoa, so crate actually isn't a perfect rectangle. It's kind of like sloped. See how it's kind of like sloped? I didn't realize that. Big fan of this. Wow, 804 rebound. Shout out to Pat Cassidy. 602 crate. Yeah, you got it for free. Shout out to Alex and December. I don't know how that happened. Let's go. Let's go, punch. What's this crypto deal that you're talking about? I love the Venice piece. I just keep going back and forth. <laughs> so mine did get delivered. Yeah, quick delivery. Are they all delivered? All right, let's see. Because this could affect how the market, you know. So it looks like they're all going to be delivered once the market opens up. So usually when this happens... They start out kind of low and then work its way up if there's demand. It's the exact opposite when there's only a few that get delivered. 
then usually if the marketplace opens before all of them get excuse me if the marketplace opens before you know a lot of them get delivered that's usually when we'll see a high price and then as they get delivered kind of comes back down so i expect this to kind of start out low and then work its way up and then if we see a crazy announcement and maybe get hit hard again but Yo, true story. <laughs> in bed this morning, Snoop went live and was smoking and singing. I ran in the living room and nailed drop mint 420. <laughs> what? <laughs> How insane is that? Shout out to Christmas. That's amazing. Shadow band. <laughs> wow, 236 crate too. You crushed it, Christmas. This art looks so cool. It definitely is. This thing is wow. It definitely looks amazing. I Yeah. I'm going to have to take it out and look in AR. I'm going to have to pull it up. Solid idea, Chasing Sundays. I'm going to pull mine up in AR and just kind of take a look at it. Yeah, I could, that's a great, great. That's kind of how I expect this to shooter. I kind of agree with that. But I don't know, though, because they all have been delivered. So I'm expecting a little run up to maybe 340, 400, and then kind of work its way back down. 501 rebound. Wow. Great job, BDK. Which one did you get? The Venice or the crate? Because that's, <laughs> I think that's a solid mint right there. Solid. BB Vibes, how we doing, brother? How we doing, fam? How'd you do today? Did you go for the drop? Did you skip it? If you did go for it, Vibes, which one did you go for? 156 crate. Wow, crushed it. Venice 172 will go for a premium. I think all lit, all low mints on artwork will be a huge deal, especially once we get that interoperability. If you can hold till then, I think they'll do great. Maybe in the short term with May being a huge month like we're expecting. It could get hurt a little bit in the short term. This is what I was hoping for. You know, I really want an airdrop. You know, something amazing for these two. Exactly. V vibes. That's hit the nail on the head. Yep, absolutely. That's kind of that's kind of how I'm expecting it. Since everything's delivered, you know, they're all going to be in there at once, kind of low. And then the ones that have demand, if this does have demand, which I think it could, maybe rises up. But people are going to be hesitant to buy because of everything that's probably popping up in May. It's going to be tough. Good vibes, good vibes. My app just crashed. Yeah, solid idea. I mean, that's a tough part, right, Simone? Is like nobody really wants to sell anything at a low right now. Um, but we all need gems, so <laughs> it's gonna be tough. I got Venice. Yeah, I, I think Venice looks amazing. Artists did sign both of them. <laughs> well, yeah, just enough gems. Nice, nice, nice. Seven five six. That's a great mint too. I'm going to pull the uh, crate up in uh, augmented reality right now. Wow, it is huge. Wow. Wow. 
It does look amazing. Why do people think Star Wars is coming soon? Well, there's been a lot of talk about Star Wars in May. And especially David's last AMA video. I don't have a picture of it. I might have a picture of it. But if you watch the community update with David, Alex, and Dan, David had a lot of Star Wars themed stuff in his <laughs> in his video. So we've kind of all been speculating. You know, we've kind of all been speculating Star Wars could be dropping with, you know, all these Star Wars comic, Darth Vader. I thought this is a soccer ball. <laughs> But there's a lot of, you know, Star Wars themed stuff there that kind of got us all excited for May. <laughs> and we got Star Wars Day coming up soon, too. So plus they've been they've been teasing Star Wars since last year in May. So I think, you know, we're finally geared up, ready to go, maybe. Yeah, Punch, that's how I feel, too. I think the artwork will look amazing. Now, in the short term, if you want to play the game, you know, sell it, you know what other cases a lot of collectors are just going to collect these because they love it they don't really care about that price in the short term facts it's my favorite wall art too absolutely we got todd father in the building wow venice 592 let's go shout out to my guy i think venice looks amazing i probably will try to grab one but i may just hold off until possibly star wars right I don't know, but I'm just glad I got one. It's in the air. That's a fact. We can all feel it. That's a low mint, too, my man. Are you going to hodl that one, or are you going to flip it and then buy back a floor? You also had a Pikachu card bottom right. So if you guys look at that image, I'll try to zoom in here. It's funny because David probably put that in here as like a little sneak peek but you know the vv fans you know <laughs> in investigating everything boom hidden right there what is that that's a pikachu if you ask me I my cars aren't down here but i got a pikachu and that looks exactly like it <laughs> Yeah, the terms of service also added in there. Huge fact right here. Absolutely, Todd Father. Star Wars will bring in another crowd of new money. Absolutely. Kind of, I see this almost, maybe not the exact same, but kind of like when Disney, first time ever tweeting us out, and we had those Disney golden moments. We saw what one tweet from Disney did, you know, brought in 200,000 users into Vivi, brand new users, right? Kind of crashed the app for those first few <laughs> drops of that week, but... Again, I mean, we saw Homer and Bart come out at $60 even when that happened. And then Smart Money was buying that up. So I think we – I'm not saying we're going to see the exact same prices, obviously, because Star Wars is crazy hype. But if they come out at a low price, I think that could be a huge life-changing opportunity for a lot of people. So I think people are trying to gear up for it. Johnny, buy my free one. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys got that. December and Alex both got one when they didn't have the gems. There must be some kind of like error that's happening. Interesting. Interesting. At max price you would pay for Darth Vader. Depends how many gems I can fit. <laughs> Four gems. <laughs> it's probably about how many gems I have left over right now, Vibes. DC Super Friends comics also in new terms of service. Wow, okay. Good to know, good to know. Pikachu Gate. <laughs> yeah, this is something too that had a lot of people, you know, going crazy is the fact that they did say they gotta catch them all, and then Alex made a joke like, come on, 
<laughs> can't be saying that. <laughs> Peaky Gate. Yeah, I mean, Rich Buddy, I feel like everybody has their own situation. Maybe people already have a C-3PO or whatever the case is right now. Yeah, it feels good to have a lot of people hit. 5K, Star Wars ready. That's a good bet right there. I think a lot of people are stacking up gems. Stacking up Omi too. I'm kind of thinking this too, Energy. I, I, I bet people probably will end up getting maybe minus 200. I'm not too sure what's going to happen there. It's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens. Because some people may not have 200 gems to kind of give back, right? So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that one. Wow. That would be insane, Willow. Sediment on the feed is that people are hodling. Wow, good to know, Myerstone. I feel like this drop could be one of the few pieces of artwork to where people see and they're like, wow, okay, I really do like this one. Sediments are high in spaces. A lot saying they're holding. Wow. Let's go. Shout out to Chasing Sundays too for, you know, being on the ground floor, getting the vibe from everybody. That's huge right there. Shout out to Chasing Sundays one time. That's kind of the way I saw this. I mean, I think people realize that this is like a high-end, you know, fine art piece. I mean, when some of these are selling for like hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> you know, like. I think the Venice piece will do amazing. I'm going to try to open up one of my showrooms right now and try to put it in. I haven't been able to have any success opening any showrooms. So we're going to try another one. C3PO is only 1,000. That seems like a steal. Absolutely. Wow, you did. That's amazing, Robin J. Hey, the last digit mints are definitely going to go for a premium. Why are you even going for the drop if you have no gems? This takes away from those who do. Good thought process. Good thought process. I think a lot of people just want to see if they can get a drop. And then I think people just test it out to see, like, let's see what happens if you hit confirm. <laughs> I think that's what December did. Um, and it worked. <laughs> like, I think people did it expecting it almost to not work, like, you know, get declined. And then it accepted it for some reason. They just took the gems from my account. There must have been a delay. Yeah, interesting. I had a little gem problem, too, the other day. I went to go buy 200 gems, and I hit cancel. Like, I didn't put in the password. I just hit cancel. And then I bought 100 gems. But then it charged me for the 200 gems and the 100 gems. But I only saw 100 gems in the app. So I was like, what? So I had to make a support ticket myself and get that figured out. But then once I got it all figured out, I added in another 500 gems. And then once Apple refunded the 200 gems that I never, the 200 gem purchase that I never saw, the VV app took away 200 gems again. <laughs> so I was like, wait, what? So I think I'm, I'm due, I'm actually owed another 200 gems, but no biggie, no rush. We're in the process of trying to figure it all out. So. <laughs> But again, it just goes to show you that, you know, it's still a new, you know, territory that we're in. So there are going to be errors that happen, but, you know, just try to make the best of the situation. Just know that we'll get everything will get resolved. I agree. Oh, dang, 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 dang. I did not know that, Willow. Free gate. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen. I know December has been disabled before, so hopefully you don't get disabled. And Alex. The Millennium Falcon will be awesome. <laughs> I think maybe he does need to correct a little bit before the fourth. I mean, whenever their big drops are, I do think that there's going to be some plan for the fourth. I mean, at this point, I think there has to be, right? <laughs> but again, for everyone else, don't bank on it because you'll be let down, disappointed. Kind of, you know, have that theory, but also expect, you know, maybe, maybe it's not as big as we think. Who knows, right? <laughs> We're all in this situation, uh, chasing Sundays. I mean, 
let's see when I want to just make sure I get in there as soon as the marketplace opens, just to try to gauge what's happening. And the market is open, but there's nothing in it. All right. That tells me it's about to open any second. I just opened up a perfect time again. I think, I don't know how this continues to happen, but I'm checking the brands right now. And I'll see a Patrick Hughes. Yeah, I don't see Patrick Hughes. Browse all collectibles in the market. I don't see it coming up here in the market just yet. Uh, all right, I'm going to close the app again. Give it another try. Reopen it. All right, it's up. Now I just got to go to view all, see if it pops up here. Market's open. I just don't see it listed just yet. I think it's about to all get listed very soon. Floor price, it's saying the floor price, 275 right now for crate. There's 134 of them. Let's go. So it is over retail. All right, and Venice is going for 185. Well, 250 now. All right, 185 to 250. Crates got, opened up a little bit more expensive. So 270 right now for crate. Market's open. I found it by going to the store tab, looking at the pieces in like the series tab, like the the reverse label, and then I went and brought it up. For instance, I went to store tab down here, clicked on the last drop that just dropped, went to the collectible, went to the one I have, right? Clicked on the dot, and then I just came down here to the floor price, and now they're all popping up. 250 looks like. <clears throat> so just over retail a little bit. JD just opened the market officially. <laughs> I don't it always happens like that. I don't <laughs> yep, 250. Someone sold for 180. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Some people are just happy to get it off, I guess. I don't know. 240 looks like it's dipping a little bit. There's a 700 mint that looks clean from Danny Donuts. Venice is down to 212. Looks like that could be going down to retail. I'm surprised Venice is down at retail and the crates. No, nah, I guess crates going to follow it. Crates down to 230. Danny Donuts got both of them. Seven percent fee, even for the artist ones, uh, VV vibes. I like the artist ones have a little bit uh less of a feed, you know. Let's go, punch. I'll join you in that one. I'm gonna list mine for 9.9 .9 mil as well. I have a bunch of James Bond ultra rare posters for sale. Just because, like I said before in the last live stream, I was going to collect every single James Bond collectible and be a James Bond master collector. But since I couldn't get that secret rare Aston Martin, figured I'm only going to keep the posters that I absolutely love. And that's the Series 1 posters. So the other ones, I'm just letting go. The ultra rares. I'll join you both. Let's go. I like Obi-Wan. Shout out to Willow. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, Willow. Absolutely.
Wow, what a joke. I got a disabled account for a malicious activity. What a joke. I record every drop, got well over 30 recordings of me spamming for drops and getting drops. Actually, so annoyed. So, Deej, are, did you get the web app? Are you Did you get the disable thing on the web app or on your mobile device, Deej? Because I know a lot of people tried to log into the web app and they didn't get the link yet. And so they got a message that said, like, disabled account. But I don't think that's really a disabled account. It's just like a, a message that says that. But if it's on mobile, like the actual VV app on your phone, that may be the case. And don't feel like, you know, you're absolutely – just write a support ticket and the VV team will get back to you very, very soon. And they'll probably review the situation and, and undisable it or, or whatever the case is. I think Star Wars is going to be huge if that does drop like we're all expecting. Let's go. Shout out to everyone. <laughs> Put it at 9.9 mil. I'm going to go look for you guys right now. And if I see anybody um, that I'm not following already, I'll give you guys a follow. You guys see how many people I'm following on the VV app? 7,000 people. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go, Chasing Sundays. I see you, brother. Oh, you almost had 100. You almost had triple digit collectibles. Let's go. Punch, I see you. All right, now I'm going to go check out. Maybe uh, you guys listed it for Venice. Yep. Elegant. That's energy. 88 sets. Whew. You almost had a thousand collectibles. RJX just gave you a follow. Muppet Poop. <laughs> I don't know if you're on the live stream, <laughs> but just gave you a follow. We got Punch. It is crazy. Yeah. And I think that's just like the ebb and flow. As we see more drops, people let go of certain things. But that's one of those collectibles, Chasing Sundays, or I should say comics, to where as we start moving you know, further and further, seeing hundreds more comics, thousands of more, that first ever comic will be something, you know, to eventually where people probably can only rent out. Because that's the first ever comic. I think there's a lot of people that probably will want to have a piece of history like that. So... It may take until we see hundreds of more comics, but all right, cool. I didn't know that was you, Robin J.A. RJX in the building. <laughs> Good to know I just followed you. Ah, oh, not enough editions. Good to know, Gary Lamento. What's his birth year? Do you know what it is off the top? Maybe you could get a, a double digit, you know, the last two digits of the year. Let's see. What year is he born? I'm going to guess in the 40s. Does that make sense? 30s if it's in the 40s there's a chance reverts to the two digit birth of year yep so that's what i'm thinking but if it could be no way he was born in 1973 <laughs> i was gonna say no way 1939 all right that makes sense that makes sense so i guess we can't get it still all right so no no birth year allowed because we don't have the I think you need a 41, right? Since VVT takes the uh, first 40 mints. My pops is 1937. He is 84. Almost the same year. <laughs> so Deej, let me know about this. Did you ever get this figured out? Did you do it on the web app or is this the website? <laughs> 
<laughs> the reason why I said that is because I know when my dad was born. So I was like, no way. My dad's older. <laughs> my dad was born in 53. So I was like, he's 20 years younger than my dad. <laughs> Sure seems like a lot of people are buying gems to secure these on the market where they're holding down the Florida lockout buyers. I haven't even tried to buy these. Let me take a look. You might be right, VV Vibes. Again, I think people are just bored and trying to piss off people. So you probably will have groups of people doing that. And I think the VV team has said if they catch people doing that, you will have a disabled account. Wow, you're right. Even on like the last, like even like the top five or ten, even the five. Wow, you're right. I think there are. <laughs> they're probably watching the stream right now just to see. That's the type of people that are doing it. I was like people who will literally have a group of people holding down the floor and then tune into all the live streamers to like see their reaction of it happening and then laugh like that's the type of people that are going to be doing it i feel like literally just bored and have that much time on the hands so really it's it's wild i think so december that's a good question though for the comics 100 i'm i don't know how many vv team took of these that's a that's a good point though i'm not i'm not positive Happy birthday to your pops. Yeah, Robin J, only a group of users got like early access to the beta. I'll bring it up really quick. Um, so this is like the web app. I mean, so sh the showrooms on the web app, it won't load for me still. So we have, you know, the whole pro profile here. This is like all my collection, my sets and everything like that. We can go to the store, you know, search for comics. Boom, now it's up, you know, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Maybe, let's see here. Let's go to the drop that just happened. We don't have too much information on that. I wonder if we can go to the comments. Can we look at all? Oh, sweet. Get some MCP points right here. <laughs> I wonder why some names are able to click on and some you can't. No? But then when you click on some names, it goes back to... So see, you see it's like not perfectly set up yet, but this is beta, you know? Collections here. You can look at all the different showrooms. That's my first one. What's cool about this is, you know, all the showrooms and the comments are saved. So you guys are going to be able to see the comments from March of 2021. Unbelievable. That's why I'm so glad I still have it. Actually. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Let's just take a look at all these comments real quick. I didn't know you could look at them real quick. Wow. One year ago. Zero cool. You guys have probably seen him on the VV app. Lois, I'd sell my entire catalog right now is... Is F or five mil? <laughs> I, I mean, I even said this, right? This is what's crazy. This is where I love looking at the comments. I almost don't want to sell. I don't, I almost don't want to ever sell anything. I want to just have people come in, pay small fee and be able to come walk around Johnny's back cave or Johnny's world. This is the vision I had since day one. I found Vivi, which is just crazy to look back at the comments. 
As far as I haven't liked all these. Pop art. Sam man, my guy. <laughs> This this guy uh, this guy right here, Sandman forty seven, the person who first showed me how to buy Oming. Crazy, right? Like that's <laughs> amazing. Had the aliens already. Crazy. Dang, bro, UG recognize you from the VV Hive Discord. <laughs> that was before you know all the things that happened with that Discord. Crazy, right? I just need a radio in here blasting some new Johnny Dunn. Imagine when we get radios, right? When we get music NFTs, like unbelievable. Man, gonna going back to these comments feels like a time capsule. That was 12 months ago. The Rebel Duck. I think we got Cavell comments in here too. Like, there are a lot of OGs in here. Droy. Dawn, Dan Shaw about. Some newer ones. I guess it's not exactly in order because now there's from a year ago. Oh, here we go crazy right like we had cavell before we were even following the Akomi twitter zero cool you guys like i said I've probably seen him on the vv app all the time i love looking at those comments Bro, not so, bro. No, not sorted out. I don't know what to do. I got five. I got fifty nine print today on a rebound, and they ban me. What should I do? So make a support ticket, Deej. Just let them know your situation. You know, don't freak out or anything like that. They will probably just review the case and everything that happened, and then just once they review and they see that you did nothing wrong, they'll just make you. You know, they'll undo the disabled. Send a support ticket. Yeah, absolutely. It's easily bought it too. You can have a brand new without a single gem in hold listings and discourage buyers. It forces sellers to undercut. That's actually a great point there, VV Vibes. Maybe we'll have to talk to someone from the Comey team. Because you're right. I mean, it's just another way for people to set up bots and undercut and then have them buy it even cheaper. <laughs> like, unbelievable. People were, that's the problem with humans, right? Like humans will try to do everything they can to constantly mess up something. Wow. Okay, Deej. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, we'll make a support ticket, Deej, and I'll try to help you out. I'll I'll try to contact someone from the Komi team. Try to speed up your process. Also, after you make the support ticket, Deej, go into the VV Discord, into their help me, and just let them know that of your issue of your support ticket number and everything and see if they can just try to, um, you know, speed up the process just a little bit, but again, just be respectful for it. It'll just help out the process go smoother and just keep me updated with everything going on. Okay. Cause I think if you make a support ticket and then let them know in the discord, they should be able to help like speed up that process before May 4th. Yeah. So VV vibes going on a hunt for some hero cards. Let me know how that worked out for you, brother. Hopefully found some good ones. It's actually not a bad idea, December. <laughs> it was almost like you just, <laughs> like you borrowed, made a little money, you know, borrowing, and then you're going to give it back. <laughs> and profit some gems. Not a bad idea. Great job, December. It could be the case. Yeah, it could definitely be the case. Willow Kid, music NFTs coming to VV. Man, I'm for it, Willow. I know Willow, you know, Willow Kid spits. 
you know, he's got flow like crazy. Got bars too. You know, we definitely need some Willow Kid music. May 10th. A lot of birthdays in May. Shout out to Punch and everyone else who has an early birthday. I know BZ had a birthday coming up soon. Oh, Gold Grateful. I don't think I've seen this, Willow. You should definitely send it. Send it to me. All gold, grateful for... Oh, uh, your tweet. Yeah, I think I did see this. I think I did. I would love I would love to see that. And I would love to start seeing, you know, maybe different catchphrases and stuff like that that VV fam and, you know, different community always says all the time. And then put it in the VV app. How amazing would that be? Wow, they don't ban me. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Shout out to Deej, man. I don't know. Maybe the Komi team, VV team was listening in, helped you with your situation, but I'm glad that you got on band. Let's go. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not. I'm good. I, I'm glad to know that you're all good. That confused me. Yes, they unbanned me. Yes, they unbanned me. They banned me. Then I submit ticket. It let me log back into the app. I am so happy. Oh, my God. Let's go. <laughs> That's a good feeling then. Probably like a weight off your shoulders. It's definitely a scary feeling. Oh, wow. So, Punch, your mom can't log in? Did you write a support ticket yet, Punch? If you didn't, make a support ticket for her, Punch. And then put it in that VV Discord, you know, that channel that helped me. And let them know your support ticket number and everything, and they should be able to speed that process up. I don't think they do real talk. They don't. And I think a lot of people are just trying to save for the Star Wars drop or anything like that in the future. Also, I want to. This is uh, one of my favorite golf cards. Now, I need your guys' help. I need you guys to tell me if this is worth anything. Now, there's a, I, I believe there's a couple Sports Illustrated for Kids Tiger Woods cards that could be. One's going for like 50 grand, and, and I don't know how valuable the other ones are, but it looks just like this. I'm not sure if this is the exact card or not, but this is a Sports Illustrated Tiger Woods card. And I want to know if that's the exact card that is selling for a lot of money. I noticed my listing locked up. I remove it and relist, sold right away. From a scale of 1 to 10, what's the morale of the community, JD? Good question here, Real Talk. I would say, oh, or do you mean like an overall morale? Or do you mean like just the market sediment or just overall VV community morale right now? I would say I don't have a number for you. I would say it's I would say it's a little bit on the lower end. I would. And I think that's bullish news because that's before we get all these major catalysts, right? So I think a lot of it has to do with you know, a little built up frustration that people have been dealing with for months now with delays happening. Omi being down for a little while now. A lot of the market's been down since all time highs in January, the start of the year. And you got to think a lot of people came in at January and February. So I think a lot of people may be down on their initial investment. So with all that tied in, I think people are kind of, quote unquote, losing hope and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of fear. But I would say in the last few days, it's kind of turned around a little bit. I think the morale is kind of kicked back. And it almost feels like we touched the bottom and we're starting to kind of, you know, get that morale back going again. That's just the way it feels to me. Um, and the kind of my pulse on the overall community. If you have a support ticket and you're just waiting, 
punch go into the vv discord and there should be like a help tab or something like that and try to just let them know your situation and a support ticket number and usually that lets people kind of you know fast forward or speed up that process a little bit right the sports illustrated kid cards i have a lot of them i have a tony hawk one i have i mean a lot of the sports illustrated cards um i should bring them all down for my next video <laughs> i agree if the hags and collectibles are invented though shout out to mr pag shout out to my collectibles you know both great people you know i love them both um but yeah absolutely you know i've been here since march of 2021 and we had a crazy run up right by the end of march things were booming i think by end of march maybe april omi was at all-time high think about it from january february march maybe april first three or four months that vivi and omi went public not omi but when the vv app went public omi got the one cent omi got the one penny first four months that vv was public and so right after that we came crashing down from the all-time highs and there was so much fear so much you know concerns these aren't even real nfts in a closed ecosystem the call me team doesn't know what they're doing people were saying because they just dropped the delorean with fifty thousand additions people didn't have that long-term view People just wanted that short term, make money right now. And so I feel like we're almost in that same exact period of time, just with more users now. And so that's why for me, I'm adding in more money because it feels like an opportunity just like it did before. I remember when I was buying like crazy in March, April, May, June, people were like, Johnny, what are you doing? Sell your collection for 40 grand right now. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, what am I doing? You just you don't understand what this is just yet if you're telling me to sell my collection at 40 grand like guys imagine if i did that right <laughs> my collection hit half a mil if i sold in january or last summer think of that right that's just because there's so much fear uncertainty doubt i just kept collecting i kept going harder then and then you fast forward you know a few months from them a handful of months handful of months from then you get the November and Disney's dropping and people are asking, Johnny, how'd you grow that collection? How'd you get to that? It's like, because you believe when other people stop believing, right? When other people are maybe having concerns, maybe people are questioning if NFTs are going to last long term. For me, I mean, unless you believe that we're going to all of a sudden get out of the digital world as the years go on, that's the problem. I feel like some people don't want that to happen. And that could be another debate. Is it a good or bad thing? But that's a debate. You have to say, is it happening or is it not happening, right? Whether I like it or not, we're moving more into the digital world every single year. I truly believe that. So if you think that we are moving into the digital world more and more and more, I think it would be an obvious transition that digital collecting, you know, your favorite brands of all time, just digitally, will be that next obvious transition shift in history. The same way people are worried about is digital music streaming going to last? That's going to be a fad, right? You can't physically touch that tangible cd well as we moved more into the digital world as iphones became more mainstream and not just the rich had iphones everybody has an iphone now now you can store millions of songs and take it anywhere in the world with you now you have premium licensed digital music streaming premium licensed digital music collections where on your phone you can show off all the songs you have the only difference with that is it was unlimited so if you get that new Drake song digitally, everyone in the world can have it and you can lease it for $9.99, right? Imagine if they did, Drake did one of 1,000. His next song is a one of 1,000 song and you can own that. That's when we start getting into NFTs, <laughs> digital collectibles, limited digital collectibles. We've never had the technology before to actually prove ownership and authenticity of a digital item. Now, because of the blockchain, we can. The blockchain has been here for a little bit, but it hasn't been widespread, massively adopted. I think as we move into digital collecting, the blockchain is just going to be that foundation. People will start thinking of NFTs as digital collectibles as opposed to NFT is a scam or NFT is, I always say, expensive animal picture. Not because that's what I think of it. That's what your average person who doesn't understand the technology behind it thinks of an NFT. I've always said it's almost like bad branding for NFTs because when think of people when people think of NFTs, 
you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, you know, what do they call it? A red flag because it's a scam, you know, you're involved with those scams, but they're not thinking of it as a digital collectible. So I think we're at the very, very beginning of this new transition. Create expectations. Floor is back up to 210. Good to know. Yeah, I'm going to go over these. So Venice is back up to 220. We got Crate going for 220, 225. Good to see. Good to see. Yeah, I agree. By the FUD. Yeah, Vivi's moving forward, not backwards. That's how I think. And think about it this way, right? This is what really is going to click in people's head who may be unsure about digital worlds, right? The whole digital space that we're in. Vivi is digitizing the largest 250 brands in the world, decades worth of content on one app. So when you think about that, think of how big Disney is, right? Their entire IP is being digitized on Vivi. Marvel's entire IP is being digitized on Vivi. DC's entire IP is being digitized on Vivi. Like we have the largest brands in the world on one app. Ghostbusters, you know, and not only that, other companies, other big brands, they're using Vivi as a promotional tool for the new products. Coca-Cola. We're going to start to see Disney promote their new V or their new Vivi. Disney's going to promote their new movies on the Vivi app. Maybe you get a free digital collectible of something with that movie, right? So many big things in the future. I think this is the very, very beginning of us transitioning as a whole society into digital collecting. Memory, I would say yes, but they've also done a good job to kind of pioneer the space too. I feel like with the Board API Club, you know, they're taking, you know, the reason why I feel like a lot of these projects won't succeed is because you're trying to create a brand new IP out of thin air. There will be some of these projects that do succeed. You know, Board API Club could be one of them because I think they've done a great job at building that brand, building that IP. And the good thing about these projects is when you own that, you own that IP. You know, you own that collectible IP. Um, so you can actually like resell shirts with it. You can open up a restaurant using it, et cetera. You could put your, you know, your ape in a movie and get royalties from it. All that kind of stuff is great, you know. But when you're thinking of the masses, the worldwide masses, you know, it's going to take a while before they understand and value that brand you know you take an average person off the street and they may not even want one for free right to collect they would want one to then flip and resell for the money but until that becomes an ip the world values you know they're doing a great job right now you know getting there but i feel like it can also kind of kill the perception of nfts because now like you said the people who don't understand this whole industry just yet that's all they think of that's why i say you know expensive animal pictures because you know, they're doing a great job, Board Ape Yacht Club, but then you see all these other projects popping up one after another. You know, you got like 100 projects a day, right? And so when the masses see that, that's all they equate NFTs to. They don't even realize that NFTs can also be, you know, Batman. It can be Superman. They don't even realize that. So the branding of NFTs, I think, will do, a, you know, will be better as we go into this future of digital collecting, more people are going to start to understand it. It's going to take projects and platforms and collectibles or comics that people are interested in that may not understand NFTs, but they find something that interests them digitally. And then they say, oh, I'm starting to understand this now. I like that. I didn't like all this stuff before. So I think there's some goods and some bads about that, but I kind of agree with the point that as a branding point, you know, it doesn't do the greatest job for the masses. Platforms like Vivi will really help that. Yeah, absolutely, Vivi Vibes. It's a nail on this head. And, and I would agree with this. He says, agreed. I don't know about killed, but they definitely shaped the perception in a negative light compared to the direction NFT should be going. And that's, the, that's what I would agree with 100%. And that's why I said I wouldn't really necessarily say kill, but I feel like they didn't do a great job at shaping the branding of NFTs. But again, I don't know how much it was really in their control just because they are taking a brand new IP and trying to make that into something that's a brand, you know, something that's valuable for the world. But in doing so, you know, most of the people think, 
why would I want that, you know, random picture of a, you know, a monkey or, you know, these different projects, projects popping up for thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars. It's amazing that you can actually own that IP, but to a lot of people that IP isn't worth anything just yet, you know? So it's going to take platforms and, and VV won't be the only platform that does this. I love other platforms out there that really help shape that narrative into digital collecting as a whole. You know, I root for all projects that way. I just believe VV is going to be the leader in this space. It's my favorite one. But again, that doesn't mean other platforms won't and can't survive. I think there, I think there's going to be room in this space for a bunch of different platforms to survive and, you know, flourish as time goes on. The masses don't know what's coming yet. If you know, you know, there are so many levels and we, <laughs> and we started from the bottom. So the only way is to the top. Look at the only price. Look at all affordable C and C's. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing right there, Punch. I think a lot of these platforms are starting to gear up towards this digital revolution that's happening. I look at, you know, other NFTs out there like, um, you know, shout out to Artifacts. You know, they have the Nike license. They're doing a lot of stuff in that AR space. I truly believe once we have AR glasses that aren't bulky, kind of the way cell phones started out. Cell phones started out as big, bulky cell phones, right? And if you told someone everyone's going to have that in their pocket 24-7, you would have been looked at as crazy because no one would have imagined a big bulky cell phone, right? But what happened? Time went on. It became affordable to the masses and it became sleek, frictionless. And so that's what I think is going to happen with glasses. You saw the big bulky VR, AR goggles, right? That's going to sleek down. And once it sleeks down to frictionless, sleek AR, VR glasses, that's when I think the world will be using it. And imagine, I mean, think of how important this is going to be when you go outside and you look in ar and you see people walking down the street maybe they look like normal people because they don't have any digital collectibles that they own right but maybe you walk down the street and you see someone with the first ever nike shoes on in ar that could be a huge deal right and then also you know think of the vv nfts when you walk into people's houses right and all of a sudden without glasses they have blank walls and everything right in their houses but with your ar apple glasses you're you call me AR glasses. You walk into people's houses now and they're not blank rooms. You see all the artwork on the walls. You see all the collectibles spaced out everywhere, right? That's the world I think is going to happen a lot quicker than people think. It may take a couple of years to get there, but I always say, would you rather be a couple of years early on the ground floor shaping this, you know, taking advantage of these opportunities we have, or would you rather be a few years late, right? When this is, you know, everybody's already doing it. It's perfect, you know, mainstream already. And there's no real room for opportunity, but it's all perfect. I'd rather be on the ground floor, really shaping the culture of all of this too. Secret Rare Ashton Meyer floor is now 2,810. I'm holding number 60. Low mint for the long term. Let's take a look at that. I love that Ashton Martin. I think it's definitely a highly, you know, sought after collectible car in the real world. I think it will happen on VV too. The secret rare, obviously not the one of seven, right? That's 1.1 mil. The ultra rare, there's only 40 left in the market. Yes, yeah, 2.8K right now. Looks like a good opportunity for Johnny Dunn to finally get one. <laughs> but I'm going to try to capitalize on Star Wars and all these big moments that do come out this month. What up, Mill Ham? How we doing? How we doing? Yeah, definitely 2.8 does seem like an opportunity. Got a big feeling DC Comics are coming to VV soon. I truly think everything's going to come to VV eventually. Will you try the uh, Kalo Scope drop today? The Kalo Scope? Uh, I don't think I'm going for this one, Energy. But shout out to the whole, you know, Kalo Scope family out there. I think a lot of people are from the VV fam. So, of course, I want to see them do well and succeed. And succeed. But I don't think I'm going for that drop today, Energy. But shout out to you if you are going for that drop. 100% though, Punch. I mean, just to go on this comment real quick, I truly believe we're at the very cusp and the very, very beginning before digital collecting becomes the mainstream for the masses. Like that word isn't even used yet. It's still just NFTs. You have NFTs. I, I think NFTs will always be a word, but I don't think that's going to be the buzzword. I think that's going to kind of transition out. And as soon as the masses start really understanding and adopting this, they're going to start saying digital collecting. Do you have the digital collectible? Do you have that digital comic? Look at my digital collection. That's why I've been, you know, 
huge on trying to say premium licensed digital collectibles because I'm trying to brand it as that so people understand, you know, it's not just NFTs, you know. The Killer Croc floor looks like a bot party. <laughs> Let's take a look. I think this drop did get hit hard with bots. You know, that's why I was so happy to get a low mint. I have a 458 that I got on the drop for this one. A lot of you guys have were tuned into that live stream. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, December, you're right. And this makes me kind of bullish on the price because I think they do this to kind of hold down the price and suppress it. And if you take a look at the floor price, this is what it looks like. This is what the floor of Batman Killer Crocs. It looks like the team hasn't gotten to this one just yet. But I mean Vivi just tweeted out. Shout out to Buddy. Got a retweet from a Comey fan. I'm going to give it a retweet too. But yeah, I think that's definitely one that let's take a look at again. What's the price here? 190? Yeah, 190. So it definitely looks like a bot party on that one. In your opinion, how much added value are the artist signatures? Should we look for the signatures? So the signatures are on the back of this one, which I think it looks amazing. I think it is a big deal. Um, some do have signatures already. The Venice piece is up to 240. Let's go. What's the expectations one? 240 as well, too. Uh so they both have Patrick Hughes' signature on the back. The first ever Disney piece has um, the creator of The Simpsons signature on the bottom of the Homer and Bart and the skateboard, Matt Groening. Some other ones too, like Jermaine Rogers has his signature in the bottom of the, what are they called, The Choices. It's kind of like sketched in there. This one looks different though. This looks like one of the first times that we've seen an artist actually sign it. Almost, we're going to be seeing signatures to where like say we go say i go to a decon event right and i meet some of the artists there there's going to be a way to where i can you know give them my phone and they're going to be able to sign it or i send it to them and they sign it and then i have a signed collectible where i could sell it as that that's going to be a real function that vv's team has talked about is coming so i'm wondering if this is one of the first ones that's happened with because it doesn't look like uh his signature is etched in sketched in or anything like that it looks like Literally, he signed it. Let me show you what I mean. Because it's on both of them. You know, it's on Venice and it's on... Shout out my guy, Tyler Gear. Um, it's on both of these. The Venice and... The Create Expectations. And it looks to me... Like he literally just signed it. So I think that's a pretty you know it's pretty sweet if that's the case yeah digital digital signature that's what i mean ronnie lido yeah i agree amazing 2013 breakout <laughs> You mean 2023 punch? Yeah, it might be a 3D scan thing. I mean, I'm not too sure because this is something that where it's not like a personal signature that, you know, you took it to him to get signed. This is like you get it on the drop. So they all come signed. I'm not too sure what the case is. I mean, we've seen this happen with a few other ones, but like I said, they've been like sketched in. Like if you look at the Matt Groening, the Disney piece, the Disney golden moment piece. If you flip up the bottom on that base at the very bottom, it has his name etched in there. Also with uh, the choices from Jermaine Rogers, it's kind of etched in there. This one looks like he took like a digital pen and he signed it. You know, maybe that's not the case. Just what it looks like. Like I probably would finish this Venice piece right now. If I had the extra 200 gems that I'm kind of due from VV right now, it's at 264 running away. But uh, 
There's 193 and 220 of the crates. I went into a comic book store and showed them my comics. They were in disbelief at all the great comics we have on the app. This is what I mean, Crypto King. We're, we've been blessed. We have some of the most holy grail comic books ever. Like, for instance, we have Fantastic Four, just Fantastic Four number one. Just chilling there, sitting, nobody's really buying it. If you had a 1.0 grade, a Fantastic Four number one, you're talking like tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars still. So I think that's a huge deal right there. You know, like even like 3.0 grades of Marvel Comics number one would probably be more than my house. <laughs> like, so, and I'm, I'm actually glad, Crypto King, I have a question. Did your comic, sport, comic book store owner, was he kind of into the digital comics or was he not a fan of it? He was like, yeah, but it's not real. Because a lot of times we see comic book store owners kind of be against the digital comics feel like they kind of get defensive afraid it could take away from their business or just kind of be you know a little bit not open-minded to it but i've seen it go the other way too where like comic store owners and sellers in the real world like elite comics they got in on the ground floor and they really you know had an open mind to understand this new world and they understood that it's almost like cross promotion you know physical promotes the digital and the digital promotes the physical to where i would have never gotten a comic book in the physical world if it wasn't for vv you know so I thought you meant 2023. So I think I can't wait until we see more comic book store owners really, you know, start to get into the whole digital comics. December, appreciate you big time for tuning in today. Good night, fam. Shout out to you for actually grabbing one on the drop today. Let's go. Even though you did sell it, but now you profited a few gems. So that's always solid right there. Just got my 300th comic on the drop yesterday. Happy to have some. Let's go. Shout out to Energy, you know, Big Whale. No, I did not yet. So I still have to figure out where my local comic shop is. I believe I do have one uptown, though. And I'm not far away. I mean, my town's pretty small. So I think once I find it uptown, I will go there. Because I do want to make a video of me going into the store. It's kind of like what some other people have done, you know. Um, and and just this for me to see what my comic store owner in the real world his belief is on the whole digital comics and you know i just want to see i'm going to show you guys what his thoughts are because he probably won't be into it until i tell him well you know what the only reason why i'm in the store right now is because of the digital comics i would have never even been in here and no, known about it really and then it would start to really get his mind to say wow okay so he's giving me business only because of the digital comics so there has to be something here right that's all I really want to really kind of do because I got a feeling he probably will have a closed mind. But once he finds out that people are coming in getting comics because of digital comics, I think he may start collecting on Vivi. <laughs> $60 for what kind of grill, MBZ? I don't know how low the floor is going to go, but I think we are close to the floors, if not. If not there already. Is it safe to say we can measure the brand's belief in VV by the bangers they were releasing on the app? If so, Disney seems to be neck deep. Absolutely real talk. Just think about it this way, right? I'm going to be signing off in a little bit, but I want to touch on some comments first. Um, absolutely, I feel this way. I mean, look at Disney. We don't even just have Pixar, right, from Disney. We don't just have one segment of Disney. We have Disney's entire IP portfolio. They already gave us Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse first appearance in one NFT. They gave us Steamboat Willie. Like we are neck or Disney's neck deep in Vivi, right? We have it all. We have ever, and so a lot of times people want to create concerns and everything like that because they say how Disney's making their own metaverse, and because they haven't mentioned Vivi in that, people want to assume like, oh, well, what about if they just take everything off the Vivi app? It's like, guys. <laughs> They just gave Vivi their entire portfolio IP. The fact that Disney is still building a metaverse is so bullish because you know that they're going to be partnering with Vivi to the end. They don't just do things for a quick money cash grab. That's not Disney. They're doing things for a legacy. You know, they're cementing their footprint in the digital age with Vivi. <laughs> the first time Disney's collectibles have been digitized are on the Vivi app. The first time these Marvel comics have been digitized are on the VV app. 
this is game changing, guys. This is huge. So when Disney does create their metaverse, you know they're going to integrate Vivi some way, somehow. So I think it's only the very beginning of a very, very long and bright future. He was at first not excited until he saw that AR Spider-Man number one comic open up on his desk. Then he grabbed his phone. Wow, that's amazing. That's actually great details right there. So I think that's what it is. You know, I think a lot of these times when people have that closed mind, they think of NFTs as a, a picture, you know, that JPEG, as people always say, like, oh, you have a picture of the comic books? Like, that's not real, you know? As soon as they see it, an augmented reality open up, and wait, this is the real comic book now? Wait, you can read this? Wait, 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 you know? That brings a whole different layer of aha moment to them. They didn't, they just thought, because you have to realize we're so entrenched in this. We think that most people think like us. Most people, you have, kind of have to peel back that layer and realize most people see these digital collectibles, these NFTs as solely pictures. So when you think, when you say you have, Marvel Comics digitally. They're like, yeah, you have a picture of it, dude. Like, cool, right? But it's so much more than that. We have the licensed comic book from Marvel just digitized. This is revolutionary. It's meaning you can literally, on your phone right now, once we have glasses, it's going to be a whole nother layer of blown away. Because now you don't need that phone to look through. It's kind of holding us back. Once we put on the glasses, now the whole world is just, it's a whole new world. It truly really is. It's a whole new layer to the world that we've never seen before. Because instead of just trying to look through the world in augmented reality through our phone screens like that, even though we're pretty much living through our phone screens, once we make it into glasses that are frictionless, I believe AR, VR glasses at their final stage will be similar to the iPhone at its final stage. Meaning once the iPhone is how it is now, with the glasses, People won't be using the iPhones as much. There's still always going to be people who still have one, of course, the same way people still have physical counterparts, right? People are still going to collect physical ones, but the digital is going to become mainstream at that point. And once we see that evolution take place, then there's going to be layers on top of that. Me and the Todd father were talking about this in March in 2021, where by the time AR glasses become mainstream, right, maybe five years from now, maybe it takes even longer to get to where we're talking about. But we're right on the cusp to where eventually, once these become mainstream, right? We're walking everywhere in the streets. We can go to people's houses. People's houses will probably have like a little, as soon as you walk in, like an entrance, like maybe confirmation with the AR. So when you walk into people's houses, everything is now AR if you walk in with the glasses on. So people's houses will probably be blank. You won't be seeing all this stuff in my house if you take the glasses off. As soon as you put the glasses on, you see everything laid out probably structured like you could probably have things where you can move them but also you can like hold it there so it's all stationary and just laid out there augmented reality is going to continue to improve so that's the way i see things going in the future and not a bad idea long term to stack winnie the pooh in my opinion not financial advice maybe wait until we do see a star wars drop and then market could come down even more we don't know for sure. Um, but I think once you feel like we're at a bottom, Winnie the Pooh would definitely be a good one, in my opinion, only. Um, I do have two Winnie the Poohs right now. Um, but again, maybe want to hold off until we see another big announcement. That's usually the great time to buy. You at a Comic-Con showing your holy grails to the artists and brands would be amazing. Man, real talk. I can't wait for that kind of stuff to happen. You know, it will definitely happen in the future. Zachary Roy. Oh, okay. You didn't go for the drop today. All right. You sat out today's game. No biggie. No biggie. Rest up for the next big one. Hopefully it is, you know, coming soon with May. Oh, yeah. Real talk. My prediction is this is definitely going to happen at some point. I mean, Okomi is a technology company. So the fact that they came out with their first, you know, gear, which was that Okomi secure wallet, and then they made the VV app. I think it's truly only the beginning. I think once maybe they do partner with AR and we have the Okomi Apple AR glasses, game changing. And I think it's still only beginning. I think they're going to continue to, you know, be innovators in this space. I see Okomi being one of the biggest brands in the world, one of the biggest companies in the world, I should say. But it's going to take time to get there. It's not going to happen overnight, right? 
It's just going to feel like a long time, possibly, because we're so in the midst of it. But at the same time, it may feel like a while. We're going to be having so much fun in this whole journey. It's going to go like that. That's why last March 2021 feels like it was four months ago. <laughs> right? But at the same time, it feels like it was like three years ago. So VV Collectibles is, buy, is like buying cars before they were roads. Best analogy I've ever heard. Wow. Crypto King. Nailed it. Deserves one of these big time. <laughs> Crush that analogy. 100%. It's like, you know, giving us the Lamborghinis, the Rolls Royces, the, you know, crazy historical cars that are worth crazy amounts of money before the roads are even being built. 100%. What's going to happen when the Disney metaverse comes out and kids can just put on their glasses, their Apple AR Comey glasses, and go to Disney World? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or put on the Oculus, you know, and VV app is in there. And now we're in the VV verse. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Reese when Reese was popping his collar of how confident he's. He is with how big a Comey will be. I went ham. That's what I mean. I mean, you got to think too. VV, I mean, the, the founders of VV, you know, Reese, Dan, David, even Jeremy Padawar, you know, they're holding Omi. They're not holding Omi because it's cool to say. You know? They're holding Omi because they believe how big this is going to be in the future. You know, when they talk about how a Comey is going to be one of the biggest companies in the world, VV is going to be one of the biggest apps in the world truly believe that you know we're just in the midst of it happening so it may take time but johnny harlow new album dropping soon <laughs> can you imagine that jack and johnny collabing i would love to see that one day we do have similar hair too my hair is a lot longer but when it was shorter it looked just like i have like the same kind of hair as jack harlow um it's kind of like curly you know oh, curly and you know kind of all over the place but it's, if i you guys don't realize how long my hair is <laughs> <laughs> if I put my hair down, like it's literally gonna come down to here. Like my hair is like th this long. <laughs> like I don't even look like the same person. But once Thor drops and we get a Thor collectible, you guys are gonna see the whole stream of my hair down. So maybe that's why Vivi's not releasing Thor just yet because they don't want to see my hair down. But you know, I promise you guys, so I will have it down. Maybe not the whole stream. But 100%, I'm going to take my whole hair down. I have it, like, kind of set up to where, when I like, it doesn't look that long right now, you know? It kind of just looks, I don't know what it looks like, but <laughs> I kind of like the style how it does, so. Have you seen the play-to-earn UFO gaming? <laughs> I think Real Talks make enough stuff now. But I can definitely, if you are serious about this, I like your second part. I can totally see this in VV Gaming. Definitely think Vivi will be coming out with gameplay with some of these collectibles, NFTs, whatever the case is. But I also see maybe being able to transfer some of these collectibles onto some platforms and play games that way too. I just truly believe this is a like like uh, Crypto King said. We're getting these collectibles before the roads are even made yet. Now it's like, would you rather be here early before the roads are made and things aren't perfect yet, but have that opportunity, or would you rather be late and you know? The whole, all the roads are rolled out and everything, you know. Probably be a little late to capitalize on any kind of opportunity. I'm going to go over the prices one more time in the market. Glad to see all the prices moving up. We got, and see, that's kind of the trend we see. When the market opens up, after everybody's collectibles are delivered, we usually see a low point and then they rise up. When we see the market open and there's still a lot to be distributed, and there's only a couple in the market, that's usually when we see a high price point. And as more and more get distributed, people put it in the market. We usually see that price come down. Usually hits like a floor when they're all delivered. And then if there is demand, that's usually when they go back up. So I think VV Vibes, you know, we called it pretty much hit the nail on the head for this one. Starts out low, work its way up. And then if there's a big announcement, maybe it comes back down. But appreciate you guys big time for, you know, tuning in today. Another great live stream with you guys. Had a blast. I'm going to be working on a few things today. I'm going to be getting the Patreon set up. 
you know, hopefully be trying to get some, you know, merch worked out to where, you know, at least just get the logo and everything from the Comey team. And then uh, a lot of big things are happening. Hopefully we get an interview with my boy Tyler Gear, you know, next week, maybe Tuesday. We'll see what happens, but I'm signing out. You know, great live stream today. Congrats to everybody who grabbed one. I'm excited for any kind of new announcement. I will be posting it ASAP on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, whatever the next big collectible drop is. But till that point, I am signing out. If you guys got any questions or anything like that, reach out to me in Twitter DMs, Instagram DMs. Try my best to get back to you ASAP. Maybe a new album coming soon, too. <laughs> we don't know. But till then, I'm signing out, everyone. It's your boy, Johnny Don. We out, fam.